Welcome back to Nate the Hate, where we're going to discuss Sony's announcement that they will not be attending E3 2020. So back in 2019, Sony was absent from E3, and it confused a lot of people, but ultimately many accepted Sony's decision solely because it appeared at the time that Sony was building towards the PlayStation 5 and didn't have a lot of brand new software for the PlayStation 4 to showcase at E3. At E3 2018, Sony's showing was very complex. They started off in a tent where they had a concert of sorts. They moved into a different area where they basically just showed a series of trailers. For a Sony E3 live conference, it felt very structured, safe, and it lacked energy. So when they removed themselves from E3 2019, many thought maybe this is a good idea. We don't need to see Ghost of Tsushima for the second time at E3 and all these other soft software releases and ultimately people really expected them to make a return to e3 2020 and today with sony's announcement it's getting a lot of mixed reaction why would sony once again remove themselves from e3 especially in a launch year of brand new hardware with the playstation 5 slated for a holiday 2020 release and for sony there can be several reasons why they would do this one e3 is a very expensive affair. The ESA charges millions of dollars to these companies to have a booth, never mind the cost to get the laborers, employees to staff it. So it is a very costly event. And Sony can now allocate that money to their own event like PSX or even into the marketing budget for the PlayStation 5 itself. So in terms of a business maneuver, this probably makes more financial sense for Sony to remove themselves from E3 then many would actually recognize. It also allows Sony to control the narrative of the PlayStation 5 in their own way. Since 2019, Sony's been in complete control of how the PlayStation 5 is received and viewed. They've done interviews with Wired. They have done other interviews with other outlets where they control the means of information delivered. They conduct and share exactly what they want the public to know. And they use buzzwords like real-time ray tracing, SSD, but they don't go into they don't go into in-depth detail of what these features will bring to the PlayStation 5. They just like to paint that picture and let the public visualize what the PlayStation 5 will come. And that's smart marketing on Sony's part. Now, by skipping E3, it also allows Sony to better connect with the fans directly with an event like PSX, or even by doing a digital delivery announcement like Nintendo does with the Nintendo Directs. Now we have to remember, the Nintendo Switch was not present at any E3 prior to its launch. Nintendo showed a trailer in October 2016, they had an event in January 2017, and then they launched the Switch in March. There was a very little lead time between the reveal trailer and launch for the Switch, and it benefited for Nintendo in a major way because the hype never died down. So now it really comes down to if Nintendo doesn't need E3 to build that hype leading up to a launch, does any company? Sony may have viewed that and learned that they don't need E3 for themselves. Microsoft will probably continue to remain at E3. They have their own theater there. It's cheap for them to rent out basically their own property. And they basically now have complete control of E3 as an event. So that's also another thing that benefit Sony is that there is no competition. E3 is a week where every company is competing for they're competing for time and attention. You have Nintendo, though they don't have a live conference at E3 anymore. They still have a booth. They still have demo stations. They do their announcements the day before E3 begins with the Nintendo Direct. You have Microsoft, you have all these third party companies like Square Enix, Sega, Namco, etc. And they're all competing for time and attention. Microsoft and Nintendo are the prime companies of E3. That's Those are the companies everyone wants to see. They want to see their new announcements. And with Microsoft having the Series X at E3 this year, that's going to be a major focus for every attendee. By Sony not being there and them hosting their own event, well, now they're not in direct competition with that. They control their own fate. 
And from a business perspective and from a public consumer point of view, it's smart. Sony can now monopolize the time they choose when they want to showcase the PlayStation 5 and its launch games. They're not going to be competing against anyone else. There's going to be no PS5 price versus Microsoft price at E3. That type of competition is over. That console war is finished. Sony now has free reign to do what they want on their own time at their own flow. But there are some ramifications from this that are negative. It harms E3 in the way that E3's importance is now diminishing. It's no longer that big event everyone can look forward to where you would expect all three figures of the gaming industry to be represented. E3 is simply a relic of gaming's past. And it's disappointing, especially for fans who looked forward to E3 every year, because even a decade ago, everyone knew E3 is right around the corner. That's where Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo are all going to announce their next big games. They're going to show new hardware, new accessories. That was the one time of year you could look forward to and know what was going to come. You knew new stuff was happening at E3. But ever since Nintendo removed themselves from E3, though we still get big announcements from Nintendo at E3, E3's overall impact has felt lessened. And this is a bit of a double-edged sword. And what I mean by that is, instead of one event where we would get just dozens upon dozens of announcements, we see Nintendo use the full calendar year to make announcements now. Microsoft and Sony have done the same. And we now see Sony really following the same path as Nintendo of no longer relegating themselves to E3, the Tokyo Game Show, or even Gamescom. Sony will now have a state of play, PSX. They're taking advantage of all 12 months by making announcements when they feel the timing is best, when it best suits them from a marketing standpoint and from a public impact standpoint. So overall, my viewpoint on Sony removing themselves from E3 for the second consecutive year is smart for Sony, damaging for the ESA and E3's overall importance within the industry, and overall it's good for the public consumer. You are now going to be able to consume PlayStation 5 and Sony content throughout the year. You're going to get more hyped announcements from Sony over the year where you have something to look forward to because anything can happen at any point now. It's no longer that focus on E3 and the event itself. However, with E3 now being just a relic of gaming's history, you kind of lose that Christmas morning feel where every year you look forward to that E3 week. That magic has now been removed from our, you know, from our life. And that's disappointing in its own way, but the industry has to grow. The industry is growing. It's going in a new direction. Streaming, cloud-based gaming, digital delivery. The way that we consume products has changed, and the way that the industry has to deliver and showcase product has to change as well. And the Nintendo Direct at the time was a risky gamble that many we're unsure of and now it's become a standard practice within the industry and it's something that Nintendo fans look forward to. I mean, let's be honest, every week they expect a new Direct. And if Sony and Microsoft can eventually build themselves up to that type of anticipation for their own products, that can be a really good thing for the industry and the consumer. So I applaud Sony for once again removing themselves from E3 and taking control of how they want to do, basically deliver their own message with the PlayStation 5 and their software moving forward. But remember, all these videos are a discussion. This is my take on this particular subject. Let me know your, you know, your take on this subject in the comment section so I can see how you view Sony's removal from E3, if you think it was a good idea for them, or if you, you know, you're concerned that E3 is now just another event and it's losing its luster. But let me know in the comment section. 
Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content. I have more content planned for the for this week, especially with the Series X. I may touch on the Switch Pro. I'm unsure right now, strictly because there's really not a lot there, and it seems like every week there's a new rumor, so I don't want to really tackle that topic until things have mostly settled down a bit. But I do have a request for everyone listening, and that is, in 2020, I want you to embrace the hate. And by that, what I mean is embrace the hate of clickbait. Embrace the hate of videos that don't respect your time. Embrace the hate of videos that don't respect your opinion or your intelligence. Just remember, as the listener, you give the content creator power. Your view influences what they create. Don't hate view a video strictly to give it a dislike and to leave a snide comment in the comment section. The most power you can give is by not viewing shallow, empty, hollow content. Because by not viewing, the creator will learn that they have to make something more appealing that respects their audience. So I want you to embrace the hate in 2019. I want you to demand higher quality content, be it YouTube, websites, or wherever you consume information.